My guest today is Christus Matskis. Christus, how are you today? I am good. It's Friday. It's almost the end of the week. So Almost uh, the end of the week. I'm two yeah. hours ahead of you. It's already the weekend for me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Done. <laughs> what do you do, Christus? I work as a PM for the developer advocacy team at Microsoft Identity. Excellent. And, That's um, a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, um, I, I really want to talk to you about uh, the uh, uh, Microsoft identity platform you're working with that aren't you i am indeed that's uh, that. that, that's how we spend the majority of our time oh sure. really well what, actually tell me about your team what's the um what's the goal of your team the goal of our team is to uh we're doing developer advocacy right so even uh -huh. though we're pms we're devrel more or less so the, the goal is to educate developers about how to use the platform how to get started uh, we do a lot of stuff on Twitch as well, where we build solutions end to end. And uh, sometimes we go on podcasts and user groups and um, conferences to talk about things that uh, developers can do with identity, how to build more secure apps and more robust apps by using the platform. Okay, so your team is really about uh, talking about security and identity, authorization, authentication, and the identity platform is one set of tools to use for that. Is that a fair statement? That is correct. Uh, everything that uh, you do these days actually gets underpinned by some kind of a security uh, system. Um, and there are two components there. One is the uh, enabling users to sign in into an application, whether these are internal users or external users to an organization or customers. And then the other component is running your application securely or your solution securely. And luckily, uh, within our team, we can talk about both of these things and anything in between and security in layers and what have you. But uh, these are the two distinct areas that uh, usually excite developers and developers are, care about. And where does the Microsoft Identity Platform fit into that? Well, the Microsoft Identity Platform, which uh, has a few components uh, at the core, we have Azure Active Directory. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have um, Azure Active Directory B2C or business to consumer. So the one side of things covers things like uh, creating an organization and enabling users in the organization to, to access resources. And the other one is I am a, like, I'm the next big, uh, you know, Costco and I want my customers to come in and sign in and buy products. So they need to have a profile and that's where B2C sits. It's all about external users using their username and password, or maybe their social media logins to come into my system, create a profile and use it. Now, uh, Azure AD also underpins a lot of Azure functionality. So if I have a website running on Azure that needs to access other resources, how can I do that securely, right? And then we have things like managed identities and service principles, which are uh, backed up by Azure AD, but not directly. Like you're not interacting directly with, uh, with Azure AD. Sometimes developers don't even know, but these are part of uh, Azure AD. Okay. And um, they allow you to create secretless apps, for example. Hmm. So is it is this is all part of the platform? Is it a platform, a really an umbrella of a different bunch of different products, or is it somehow the, um, a single product with components that are integrated no, together the, by that product? Yeah, you're right. I think the the Microsoft Identity Platform is the umbrella that underpins certain services and functionality. So under there we have uh, things like Easy Auth for web apps, where you can support Azure AD. We have the actual actual Azure Active Directory. We have B2C, which is a, a different service. Then we have B2B, which is part of the, the, the whole solution like business to business. So all these are part of the Microsoft Identity Platform. Okay, well tell me about how, how uh, developers would use that to build a secure application. Perfect, so um, at the, usually when we talk about identity, most people think about uh, logging in users. So you know, you're building a brand new app, whether it's a web app, a mobile app, or some daemon that needs to run somewhere to uh, call services. You a need daemon, yes. A daemon service. <laughs> uh, you need some way to authenticate against the system. So uh, if you're building that, then you can choose whether you want to have internal or external users. And that boils down to the, the basic decision. Once you decide what kind of users are going to use your system, then you either pull Azure AD or B2C into the configuration. Mm -hmm. you, you have two different components. One is configuring something inside Azure AD or B2C to say, I'm going to use you as my backend identity provider. 
And once you do that, you get some metadata, an application ID, a tenant ID, and then you use that information to go into your code and then write something. Uh, ideally, we don't want you to write a lot of code. We don't want you to think about protocols and flows and what have you. We just say, if you're building a web app, uh, if it's a server-side app, then these, these are the libraries that you need to use. If you're uh, using Java, .NET, any, any technology that you want to use, Node and what have you. If you're building a single page app, then there are different libraries that we want you to use, or you can use any library that is compliant. And then once you have these two, uh, in effect, you have your Azure AD component, which is the app registration. And then you have something in your code that calls into that app registration and authenticates users. That's, uh, that's all you need to get started with. And then you can build on that. You can call other APIs, you can call other services, and you can build a very elaborate solution. But at the very high level, that's all you need to do to get started. Is the app registration something that I do uh, in the Azure portal, or is it um, in configuration or part of code or what? Luckily, everything is now API driven. So if you want to do everything in the portal, then you can do so. But we do know that a lot of developers or teams don't have access to a portal. So everything is accessible via uh, APIs. That is directly calling the Graph API to uh, set things up, or you can use PowerShell, the Azure CLI, uh, or your own custom tools that you build around a wrapper for the REST API. But we, ha we provide you with all these different uh, scripting capabilities as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, tell me about the difference between Azure AD and Azure AD B to C. Is it just a matter of scale or are there different features between the two? Well, the, as I said before, if you are building a solution that it is for your organization, you know, organizational users, organizational data, I work for Contoso.com and I want to sign in all my Contoso uh, buddies into the app, then this is where Azure AD comes into play. This is an internal application that is going to be used by my organization. Yeah, but if you come to me and say, Chris, let's build the next amazing startup and we want people to sign in with their mobile app and you know uh, buy clothes from us, right? Let's, let's say we're building a clothing company. Now, it makes no sense to have organizational data there. The customers, uh -huh. they don't belong to us. Now, this is where B2C comes into play. It's a simple username and password database uh, for signing in users, signing in, signing up, managing their profiles, but they have nothing to do with my organization. It, it's just associated with a product or products and uh, we allow them to come in, username, password, or social media uh, sign-ins, or anything that supports OpenID Connect. It's a fair game. Okay, yeah, you mentioned OpenID Connect. In fact, I'm looking at the um, this Getting Started page for Identity uh -huh. Platform, and I see a lot of standard, it says Standard Compliant Authentication Services. Yes. Is that, uh, what's, what do you mean by that? Well, I like not to talk about protocols because people get inundated and confused. Like, oh, do I need to know about these things? Or Technically, you don't. But the, the, the nice thing about this is that because we're compliant uh, with the, the standards, OAuth2 and OpenID Connect for authenticating and acquiring tokens, it means that any library that has been built um, around these protocols, any library that has been built that is compliant to these can be used with uh, our System. So if you have a, an existing, say, solution that uses OpenID Connect to authenticate to, say, one identity provider, and now your company is moving to Azure or they want to use Azure AD, then all you have to do is just point your library to our endpoints, and uh, many things should work out of the box. Hmm. I also see support for uh, open source libraries here. Can you tell me a little bit about that. Correct. So uh, if you are very new to identity, it's very confusing. How do I get started? I, have, I want to build a single page app with uh, React and I want to authenticate my users, how do I get started? Yes. Um, li likely, we have a, a very comprehensive list of libraries for the Microsoft Identity Platform. Uh, the library is called MSAL, Microsoft Authentication Library, and it is becoming available to more and more and more frameworks and languages. Uh, so if you are, uh, you know, if you're looking into Go right now, you might say, well, there's nothing for Go, but likely we have a preview library coming out. So this library allows you to, you're in a Greenfield project, you're very new to identity, get it off the shelf and get started. We have uh, an insane amount of samples out there to support you. However, uh, you might say, well, I already have a, a Node.js app that has been using Passport for the last three years. I don't want to uh, rip it all apart. So any open, open source library, uh, authentication library, uh, that supports OAuth2 and OpenID Connect can be used to, uh, to authenticate against Azure AD and B2C. Oh, so you bring, nice. you bring your own library in effect, that's what we're saying. You don't have to use our, our stuff. We're not opinionated. 
Uh, if people want to get started, where is the best place to go? I think right now document, the, the documentation page is the best. Uh, the docs provide a lot of information about uh, what is the Microsoft Identity Platform, how to choose the right um, tool for your uh, solution. And then they go into the, there are a lot of startups uh, or getting started and samples and tutorials that uh, explain how to build end-to-end -end solutions. We are working a lot more to add scenario-driven uh, documentation rather than, hey, this is how you authenticate a web app. Because usually people will say, well, I have a web app that calls an API that maybe also be calling into other services. How do I bring all these together? Uh, a lot of these samples are in the uh, Azure sample uh, repository on GitHub. So people can go and find things there. We link from the documentation as well, so you don't have to go and uh, blindly look in the samples. But uh, starting from there is great. We also have a, a weekly or twice weekly stream on Twitch, the, the 4 oh. to 5 show, where we talk about identity. In fact, we build identity day in, day out with, with uh, guests, with friends of identity, ourselves sometimes, covering those scenarios. In fact, today we had somebody showing us how they can use Pulumi with Azure and um, you know, deploying Azure infrastructure with Pulumi and securing it with Azure AD to make sure that your CI CD pipeline remains secure. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, more and more developers are moving to Twitch to share knowledge. Yeah, we're, uh, it's, it's, for us, it's a major focus and all the content becomes available on YouTube. Uh, we collaborate with a lot of uh, Twitchers as well and people from the MVP community and what have you. So if you're, if you're listening to this one and you want to come and tell the story, your story uh, to us or build something with us on stage, reach out. What's the name of your Twitch channel? I'm looking it up right now. It's a 425 show. So that's 425, say it again? Show, the 425 show. show. 425 show, I see. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, it's getting loud. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mute that tab. <laughs> that was a commercial. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Uh, I, I think we touched a little bit on the uh, securely running solutions uh, or with the Microsoft Identity Platform. So as I said, so most of the time people think about identity in terms of I need to authenticate users or I need to give them access to something. But in many cases, there are things like how can I remove secrets from my application? How can I make it more secure? How can I run my platform without having to you know, think or worry about secrets and uh, connection strings and what have you? being passed around so uh, as i said azure ad also allows you to build a very robust uh, secure devops pipeline where you remove the secrets from the local development so developers don't have to worry about how do i access my sql server on azure or how do i access my storage account and then you can take the exact same code without any code changes and move it to the production uh, environment and use the uh, the built-in identity systems that we have called manas identity to access those resources. And that works in collaboration with the Azure SDKs, uh, Graph and what have you. So it becomes very, uh, that's a very nice way to eliminate risks from your operation. Hmm. Excellent. But by the way, what is uh, 425? Is that, what's the uh, meaning of that? that? What is the meaning of that? So 425 is the Redmond area code. So technically ah. we're the Redmond show. However, when we initially started the show, uh, my my partner in crime, JP, said, hey, let's, let's do the stream at 10 o'clock. I was like, yeah, that's perfect. 10 o'clock sounds like a great time. Although he is on the East Coast and I am on the West Coast. So it's lunchtime so, for him. So it was, no, it was, it was 10 a.m. for him, 7 oh. a.m. for me. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and it turns out that the 4 to 5 uh, is also an HTTP code for too early. And because I had to get up too early to do the stream, it's like, uh, you know, the too early like show it. or the Redmond show. It has two meanings. It's very goofy. Excellent. Well, Christus, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and uh, you stay safe. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was brilliant. What is better than spending your afternoon talking about technology with your friends?